process, I guess we could talk a little bit about that. Um, most of my work are, um, I like mark making, um, and most of my work is based on the actual process itself. Um, I like, the process is just as important as the final result. Um, I like the step-by-step -step kind of translates like into my life um, where I have to kind of like step back and let my pieces talk to me. And um, yeah, so like <laughs> I, I start with this entire body work has been on raw canvas. Um, I chose raw canvas for this particular show um, because the entire subject was mama and the search for home and not really knowing where home is and kind of what you thought was home really wasn't and then kind of having to build your own um, foundation. And so I started them raw and I started them on the ground and I started them wet and walking on them barefoot. Sometimes my boots, you can still see boot marks on them, at some, some of them. Um, and I kind of really loved that I could pick up the topography underneath and it's almost like I'm it's almost just as if like a mark of like, I was here, this is the ground underneath it. And it's always gonna be on the paintings and it's always gonna be underneath whatever marks I put over it. So I think that was um, originally why I started wanting to work with raw canvas for this particular show. Um, and then after like, you know, there's always the steps of like, it starts off on the ground um, and then it dries, clipped up and then it goes back on the ground and back and forth, back and forth until it tells me it's done. Um, the smaller pieces I have on this wall are all, I wanna say sketches for my bigger pieces. I like to work out my marks. Uh, my marks can't be intentional. I almost have to, just telling Karen, I have to close my eyes sometimes before I put my mark down. Like I know what mark I want. Like if I want like a square shape, I can't look at it and make a square because it's going to be way too intentional. I love the, I like even like with the colors I use, like sometimes I'll want a white, but they'll still be green on that brush. And I am totally okay with that. I love those accidents because I think it's, I don't think anything's an accident. I think it's just supposed to be the way it is. And I love the way it dries. And it's always a surprise to me. Like if I have a clear idea of what I want to do, it never turns out well. Like I only have the only clear idea it has to be one step ahead and that's it like that moment and I think that like um I think that's a really good just like that's like I said translated into my actual life where it's having like a rough outline in life in general is better than holding on to um ideas like concrete and having like way too high of expectations and then being really disappointed when it doesn't go that way I think it's just like I think it's a good like um just, you know, it's a good way to live. It's kind of like, okay, like I, I like this, but I'm okay with it. It goes a little bit differently. And um, and that's also why I like using different mediums. I don't just stick with acrylic. I use literally anything that's around me that I feel. <laughs> like if I'm like in a zone and I just like grab a pen that's near me, that's what I'm using because that's what it's supposed to be. You know, like, and if I think about it too much, then like, you know, then it's all, it, 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 it goes for shit. So, um, pardon my French, um, but yeah, even like a, probably a week before I stretch these, cause I, they're not stretched while I'm working on them. Before I stretch them, I decided that I'm gonna throw them all away and I was starting over. <laughs> I didn't tell Karen because <laughs> I'm gonna tell her that, but um, I was like, I hate them all. Cause like, I just, you know, I think, and I think that is kind of the definition of like, that means it's a, it's going well. Is that you have to be on that roller coaster and you have to at some point hate your work because you're so involved in it and you're so your heart and your soul is everything. That means okay, like that's okay. And then like you step back, I put them away for a while, and then I'm okay again. But um, yeah, it was definitely like in about, like this was like a like a body work. You know, it wasn't just like one individual at pizza at a time. I was working on them um, all at the same time. Um, so it's been like, it's been a journey and it's really awesome that people get to like see it at the end of it because it um, doesn't happen all the time. But, um, and it's fun to see like other people's reactions because I didn't want anyone really to see too much of it. So you never know. Um, but like, it's interesting to see like 
that because I don't know if it's going to like what I'm feeling doesn't mean it's going to translate exactly to the person viewing it but it's really awesome to see when I actually get that reaction like people are connecting with it and I'm like yes like that's what I want and I think that's what any human wants is like that connection you know so this is Sarah's first solo show and um before this she's been she's been selling her work through galleries but she's never had the opportunity to just put a show together for yeah for, yeah. I think my career is kind of kind of backwards where I think and I'm no, it's just, that's the way it is right, right? it's yeah. just kind of like my it's a good, it's a good way yeah. right I got galleries attention before I had a lot of work and they kind of like we want these kinds of works can you create them so I was working for like you know I was creating for other people so I never, even though they wanted, they liked my, you know, my work, it was still like, I still had them in my studio. I still have them in my head. So this was the first time I was able to create a body of work that nobody else was in the studio with me, mm -hmm. um, except my mom in my head. Mm -hmm. She's not, she's not alive anymore, but like, um, you know, she was in there with me, but this was like a really cool opportunity to do that. So, um, and I, you know, it's a little bit different. I never used raw canvas before this, so. I was taking a chance. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing half the time, but I think like the the formula is just to keep doing it. Like whatever it is, like it doesn't have to be painting, but like I think. Music playing too? Huh? Do you have music playing, or you need silence? Um, both. Sometimes I'll have like my um, ear uh, noise canceling headphones on most of the time, and sometimes I won't realize that the music had stopped. Like I don't know how long ago. But uh, a lot of the time, I'll just do my work. Most of the time I'm working is me staring at a mark on the wall or on the canvas for about 45 minutes to three hours. Um, there's a lot of staring. And I think I'm really fortunate I found a career that is okay to do. Because that is not, it has not been okay to do in my last jobs. <laughs> staring at like just like, you know, um, because I, I can focus on marks that have been already forgotten. I think I like that idea. Like I like little corners of things. I like drips that like have been there over time. I like the, like the, you know, the paint that has been chipped and, and because of time, not because somebody did it. Um, so I like that's, it's been great that I've been able to do that in this world. But like, you know, when I was a writer, I was a copywriter and that just did not work, mm -hmm. which is why I probably got laid off. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I've never been able to like contain like I've always been really good at whatever I try but I can't contain it because like I think my mind is just not wired to be in real world and um, I don't have a choice doing this like I have to do this like there is no like okay well I have to wake up and I have to paint today it's like no like I have to go to sleep because I've been painting for like 12 hours straight so um, you do more than one at a time yeah I, I been working on multiple at a time because if I keep working on one, then I'm thinking about it, and then that's when I screw it up. Um, because that's because you're not like you want it to be because you want like you want to finish it in your mind. You're like I want this to be done. Like I just need a mark right there, and it's like then you keep doing, you keep thinking, and you keep putting marks. And you're like, oh, crap. you know, like I needed to walk away like an hour ago. So I think like letting things breathe has been a really important lesson to me. So working on multiple things at the same time is a really good way to do that. That way you can walk away and then focus your attention on the other one. It also kind of like makes you see things differently when you come back because it, you know, it'll be on the ground sometimes and I'll turn it upside down. I, I turn these at least like, I don't know, hundreds of times like throughout the process and then I'll figure it out what the front, what's the, you know, which way is up later. <laughs> so she said she basically trusts her internal movements more. She does. Yeah, hundred percent. I have never been able to trust my brain, seeing. but I can always trust my gut. Yeah. Like I've always like I've struggled with you know my mental like health my whole life, and it's just kind of been. I think anxiety, and depression runs through my family, but also just the things I've been through kind of help it. Um, so like you know like when you have anxiety, when you have depression, when you're in survival mode, you can't think clearly, and so I've been able to like learn to trust my gut. And it's never been wrong, like ever. And like sometimes, like, well, I trust my gut and didn't go right away. I'm like, well, that's because you overthink it. Like, it's always that first like, initial reaction is the right one. Um, that is probably why I'm still alive today. Because, <laughs> like, you know, I've been able to like trust that. And, you know, it's difficult for me to like know what, um, what normal people are supposed to do throughout the day. 
So I have to like actually think about these things. But normal, but right. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I mean, like, and you're right. I think everybody has is everybody is weird in their own way and not normal. Everyone thinks they're like the not normal one. Right. <laughs> it's an angel. Um, but uh, yeah, like I just I I think because I'm getting it out in my art and art is my therapy, I'm able to function better in society. And I'm able to like, okay, today is laundry day. I'm gonna do my and I have a kid, so <laughs> You know, like I have to like make sure she's alive and not like not just alive. Like I don't want her to have too much therapy later on. <laughs> you know, like I mean, like if she's being raised by an artist and like um, like to her this doesn't phase her at all. I think it'd be weirder if I now if I was like an accountant. You know, she's pretty into it. Yeah, yeah. she's into, yeah, she's really into it. Yeah. If we talk about like mama, right, and like yeah. going back and trying to like retrace something, but also that dialogue about talking about not looking too far ahead and one step, you know, taking one right. step in front of, the, like, one step at a time. Like, that's, like, just, like, an interesting, like, just concept well, to me. Yeah. that, together, that how they correlate with that is when my mom was sick, I was her main caregiver. Mm -hmm. And um, everything, she, but she was, I mean, she was, like, it's, you know, like, when someone's sick and someone's dying and someone's on hospice, like, you come and visit and then you get to go back to your own life. Um, this was not, this was my life, and I was um, a single mom at the time. I had like a two-year-old, and then my mom had in-home hospice in my apartment. So it was it was at that time, and she was like my everything. She was like the matriarch of the family. So like she was my home, she was my stability, she was the comfort. So I think at that moment, at those times, that she was in hospice for a year, which was way too long to like die. Like it should not be that long, it's horrible. Um, that's when I realized like you can't, have these like plans, like my comfort and my security blanket was gone. And I had to find out my own, I had to figure out what that meant. And I think that's probably when I started painting because I didn't have anything to lose at that point. It was like, there was no more comfort zone. So I was only able to look a step ahead. Like, because like, I never thought like, you know, when I was in my twenties that my, I was gonna like not have my mom there. And I was, you know, I was being a single mom. Like that was never like a thing in my head. Like it was gonna be normal, I was gonna have like, be married and have a kid my mom was going to raise and help me right you know like the whole thing mm -hmm. so i think like having like that it's comforting to know that it's okay <laughs> not to have comfort in some way does that make any sense it's just kind of like okay i'm okay with it's like it's almost like the what's the root of all suffering is attachment mm -hmm. and it's just like i'm okay with the impermanence of it all and it's not going to last and it's scary and it's, it took me a long time to get here but i think um just being okay with the rough outline and being okay with just what's in front of you and being in that moment is is comforting enough to me. And I think that's kind of been like the healing process of this whole show of Mama is that I've been able to like just trust my instinct and just kind of be like, it's not probably not going to turn out exactly how I thought in my head, but it's going to be okay. You know? It's like no wonder she was in the middle of <laughs> or seem to like die and then come back from yeah. the dead, you know. And it's, I mean, it's, I don't want everyone to have to go through all you know horrible pain in your life to have to like you know reach this epiphany. But I sometimes like, and that's how I see it now. It's like every challenge in my life, like nothing really bothers me anymore. But like, you know, it's it's every challenge is really a growing and learning experience. And I hate how cliche that sounds, but like it it really is. It's just like it's uh, being uncomfortable is growing. Like you have to be uncomfortable um, and it has to hurt and it has to be feel weird. And, and sometimes the universe does, and if you don't listen, the universe will put something, you know, like continue like pushing these obstacles in front of you until you're like, hey, this is what we're trying to tell you. Um, so I don't know what's gonna happen, you know. I you, know, you always think you know it all, but I'm only 34, I don't know what's happening. So, but like, I'm just gonna keep, keep, doing what feels natural to me. And I think that's like what anyone should be doing is just kind of living their own truth, whatever that is. And I think like finding it is like, is the hard part, I guess.